I'd like to call the meeting to order the Terrebonne Parish Council Wednesday, July 28th. And I would like to uh, ask Mr. Dirk Guidry, could you please uh, lead us in a prayer and a pledge? Dear Lord, we are meeting today to conduct matters of business, God hearts and minds, and the spirits of fairness right through thought and speech. Important be your supreme wisdom upon action so that decisions may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for being our source of guidance today. Amen. 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 Mr. Keith, roll call. <coughs> Mr. Michel? Here. Mr. Amade? Here. Ms. Domain? Here. Mr. Darren Guidry? Here. Mr. Bavin? Here. Mr. Dirk Guidry? Here. Mr. Trusclair? Here. Mr. Navy? Mr. Harding? Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thank you. Approve minutes of the special council meeting held on June 21st, 2021. So moved. Moved by um, Mr. John Amade, seconded by uh, Mr. Gerald Michel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, next item, approved minutes of the special council session held on June 23rd, 2021. Moved by Mr. Danny Babin, seconded by Mr. Uh, Michel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next item, approved minutes of the regular council session held on June 23rd, 2021. So moved. Moved by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Second. Seconded by Mr. Danny Babin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next item, a distribute minutes of the regular council session held on July 14th, 2021, which has been done. Approve accounts payable bill list for July 19th, 2021 and July 26th, 2021. Moved by Mr. Danny Babin. Second. Seconded by uh, Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Next, approve the manual checklist for June 2021. So moved. Second. Move by Mr. Danny Babin, second of Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Next staff reports, update on drainage, pumps, generators, and other projects. Mr. Mike Toops. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, everyone was sent an email yesterday with the report. As of today, we have 200 out of 201 pumps operating. The one pump that's not in operation, the D3 Upper Montague, Mr. Norman Porsche and his crew began the reinstallation of that pump today. And uh, that's the only information I have to update unless anyone has any questions. Thank you. Seeing no lights, thanks Mr. Toops. Um, next item, public wishing to address the uh, board. Uh, Mr. Floyd Bergeron uh, wishes to address the board, to address the council relative to placing the matter of the sale and use of fireworks on the ballot for residents to approve and he's filled out a speaker card to adjust his presentation to include the government tower parking lot. Mr. Floyd, you have three minutes. Thank you, Floyd Bezron, 201 Kelly Drive. Uh, we went through the same scenario with the fireworks. It, it wasn't as long. Your hours, I think, was supposed to be from 7 to 10. It started at 2 o'clock in the morning. It went to about 2 o'clock. The next morning, I mean, two o'clock in the afternoon, and they did the big old bombs, everything flying all over the place. And y'all need to look at that. I mean, this, this is something that started three months before. It took three months. Y'all did the ordinance. It passed. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it, and all in that time, at the same time, this, they had a prop tick uh, on just across Bio Blue that... Uh, uh, fireworks LLS Louisiana. Well, I got to the to the uh, assessor's office in Thibodeau, and somebody out of Pittsburgh, Kansas, bought that building, and it's been closed for five years. Dollar General Store, and they paid five hundred and forty-nine thousand dollars for it. Now, I I don't know if there's anything wrong with it, but I don't know. It, it just don't seem right to me. And going back to the fireworks, these they advertised on the, on the radio two two places. On, main, on park, big bombs, big bombs, come by. Well, this guy in Oakland, California, was hit in the chest by one of them big bombs and it killed him. Two homes in Fort Worth, Texas were burnt to the ground. I saw this on TV. So, I mean, y'all need to relook at that, put it on the ballot, or just exempt, listen, Biocane starts at Hollywood Road and goes all the way to Oakshire. It's nothing but subdivision. Where I live, it starts on Wayne Avenue and Barker GMC. That's nothing but subdivisions. Either keep us out, put it on the ballot, but let us have a choice to either say yay or nay. 
Thank you. Now, the other thing, uh, last week, I had to come to the government tower, and I saw a whole bunch of gentlemen standing up in the hot sun. Mr. Dove, uh, Mr. Uh, I can't think of his name, well, in our tubes, they, they was all out there. And I said, this doesn't sun right. They, 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 they're not out here to get a, a sunshine, nothing like this. So I called up Mr. Mort Black. Point of water, Anything you've got to do with, uh, on our agenda? It's, it's with, uh, it's with, no, 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 sir, Mr. Um, Mr. Gidry, he did uh, modify his, um, his request, and our charter does allow them to have up to two items. Yeah, he modified that with a speaker card uh, to okay. add it. So we just put them together because you can only speak once, so we put them together. Okay. Uh, I'm, got I'm, a, I'm got trying to minute. pass this on to you all to save the taxpayers some money, so you all listen carefully. There was all out there in this hot, hot sun, so I called Mort Black. I said, I know you all weren't out there for the sunshine, this and that. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Floyd said we're going to put up a model of one of the deals in the ship channel. And he said, we're gonna have a working model. The gates is gonna open and close, the waters is gonna go through. He said, the taxpayers are really enjoy seeing that money where it goes. Well, I'd much rather see my money where it goes to fix streets, cut grass, dig ditches, and everything else. So if Mr. Dove decides to bring this up and-, and, and We have a, a motion, hold on, uh, we have a motion to extend. Um, Ten seconds. Second. Go ahead. If, that, if this is going to come up in the future, and please consider saying no. If he wants to put it up in front of his house, that's fine with me, but not at the taxpayer's money. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. Uh, next on our uh, agenda, oh, we have a light. Mr. Dove. Yes, I just, I just want to respond with what he's talking about. The CPRA, the state paid about $1.4 million for the engineering and the model of the $450 million lock system that is being built on the HNC. So it's, we have a joint venture between us and the levy board. We are going, we, we're, we're looking at, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna run the numbers to put a, the, the lock system operational with the board right here in the parking lot of the government towers. Now, why would we do this? First, you wanna educate the people that we will have a lock system for vessels to come and go during an abnormal high tides. With rising seas, you will be coming through lock systems. We, this, this government, this, this parish government has already built two lock systems. One is Chauvin, one is, one is complete, it's being completed in, in Bayou Terrebonne for vessels to come and go. If you want marine vessels into this parish, if, if, if you want to educate as many people as possible, we, you know, we plan to have a screen up that's going to describe Morganza to the Gulf, what is protecting our businesses, our schools, our homes, our graveyards. And we're just in the preliminary, and we're going to bring, we're going to bring the whole package to the council for their approval or for, for, for what they, they believe needs to, you know, that they would like to add to that. You know, if we, we this 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 lock system will be will be built in the H and C, 22 miles below Terrebonne Parish. Unless you have a boat, you'll never see it. You'll never see the Bubba Dove out there, unless you have a boat. So this is just to educate the people, and 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 bring to the people what we're doing to protect them. That's why you see. Dollar stores opening up in Pornisham, Montague. You 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 have uh, you you have people staying down the bayous because if if you notice every time we build a project, we're putting up signs to show the lock system in Dirk's Dirk Gidry system, the lock system in Steve Trostclair's district, the pump stations in everyone district that we're building. If we don't show the people of Terrebonne that they will not flood, they are protected, it's to educate, educate, and we're looking at very little money. We're gonna bring the CPRA in on this, but we're not paying a $1.4 million for this, for this model lock. It was already paid for it. It had to be built, because they have to run a model on the wall in Boston, Massachusetts, that they ran models to make sure that this system we are putting is going to, when you spend $450 million, they're going to build a model and make sure it's adequate. So I just wanted to bring that uh, to everyone's attention. Thank you all very much. 
Uh, and thank you, Mr. Dove. And I, I know all too well, being a former member of the levy board, I remember the millions and millions of dollars that the Corps of Engineers required to study the hydrology of the Morganza system before they built it. So yeah, this 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 model is classic Corps. It, it you know uh, is something they require that has to be built. So uh, I know it's not costing us any extra money, but I'm glad we're able to at least use that model because I think they just destroy those models. If I remember right, after they get done, they just throw them away. So this at least gives us an opportunity to, to utilize this to educate the public because, uh, you know, the core makes you build them. Um, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, item B is uh, Julie Jackson, a resident of 226 Douglas Drive, Homa, Louisiana, who wished to address the council regarding a previous study conducted on a vacant lot next to her home that is causing drainage issues. I don't believe Ms. Jackson is here. Is she not? No. Uh, item C is speaker cards. We have Mr. Robert uh, Cutting. I think that's, uh, if, if I have that right, uh, maybe you can go ahead and introduce yourself uh, and give your address yeah, for the record. Mr. Robert Cutting, 200 President Drive. This is the third time I've talked to you all about fireworks. This is the last time, I promise. I have one question, okay? I came to back this man up a little bit. I, I felt like when I was here twice before, that I was all alone, that nobody else had any problems with fireworks. I found out I wasn't, okay? It feels pretty good. Uh, one question for somebody on the council. Why can't you have a designated area where they can shoot these fireworks, like a soccer field, a baseball field, a football field, where they don't blast right next to a person's house for between six and eight hours at a time? Anybody? Anybody answer it? Um, th this is not a question and answer, Mr. Cutting. You can address well, us I, and go ahead and... I'm talking, wasting my time talking then, all right, pretty much. Okay, I forget about that. Tall grass. I almost got killed on American Boulevard pulling out. I stopped at the sign. My front bumper was at the stop sign. Couldn't see. I pulled up a few feet, feet more. I still couldn't see. I got almost to the road, almost to 57, and looked, looked good. I pulled out. The minute I looked in my mirror, I had a white car right in my bumper, about that far of my bumper. How she didn't hit me, I don't know. I'm sure she was cussing me out. Couldn't see. Okay, they've cut the grass on the road, okay? The grass in the ditch is almost as high as the grass was before. It's going to get higher. You've got to cut the ditches also. Somebody is going to get killed out there. There's, all, there's three crosses out there right now in, the, in that area. I don't know what it was, tall grass or something else. But somebody's going to get killed if we don't keep that grass cut. And I'm sure there's other places besides... American Boulevard in 57. Thank you for your time. I, I can't believe you can't answer my question about the fireworks. Somebody. Were there 12 people there? Well, we can't discuss it, Mr. Cutting, because it's not on our agenda. So... Uh, it's the third time I've talked to you all. I mentioned it all three times. I, I understand, but it, it, was, it was never put on the, the agenda. Did you call your council person and I, ask them I'm to put it on the agenda? I'm not familiar with how this goes. How okay. you, you, you have to contact your council person and ask that they put the item on the agenda. Then we can discuss it. But other than that, it's just we, we have three minutes that allow the general public to address the council on items, but we can't get into a debate because <laughs> it was not on our agenda. I just wanted an answer to a simple question. I'm not going to debate. Thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. And uh, we are going to be addressing uh, the uh, grass cutting, Mr. Cutting. Grass cutting is on our agenda tonight, so we will be discussing that. Um, thank you very much. Um, 6.30, do we have a motion to, uh, it's not 6.30, do we have a motion to divert and uh, take up item three? Yes, I make the motion. We have to take them out of order. Um, on our agenda, which we have a motion from John Amity to take up uh, uh, item three, seconded by uh, Gerald Michel. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Item three, committee reports. Accept the minutes of the Terrebonne Parish Sales and Use Tax Advisory Board meeting dated July 13th, 2021, and consider ratification of actions relative to the recommendation to accept the 2020 financial audit report as prepared by Bourgeois Bennett, LLC. My time is up. Do I have a motion? I move. Move Mr. John Amity, second of Mr. Danny Babin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are accepted. Item B, Public Service Committee, Mr. Dirk Guidry. I make a motion that the council accept and ratify the minutes of the Public Services Committee meeting held on July 26, 2021, and I have full public hearings. 
Number one, an ordinance to amend the Article 2 Comprehensive Solid Waste Management Program of Chapter 11 of the Terrible Parish Code of Ordinance to classify waste generated in the process of lawful eviction to provide procedures for management and disposal of bulky waste not authorized for parish pickup, to provide for administration and penalties for violations related thereto, and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 11, 2021, at 6.30 p.m. Also, an ordinance to establish a four-way stop at the intersection of Kelly Drive and McCoy Street and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 11, 2021, at 6.30 p.m. Third, an ordinance to correct and update the polling locations identified in ordinance number 9099 to establish Precinct 15 South Down Elementary School located at 1124 St. Charles Street in Homer, Louisiana. Precinct 16 South Down Elementary School located at 1124 St. Charles Street in Homer, Louisiana. Precinct 29 East Park Fire Station located at 8547 Park Avenue in Homer, Louisiana. Precinct 46 Municipal Auditorium located at 880 Verrett Street in Homer, Louisiana. Precinct 58 Polish Elementary School located at 1236 Highway 665 in Montague. LA Precinct 63 Little Car Volunteer Fire Department Fitness Center located at 5612 Highway 56 in Chauvin, Louisiana. And Precinct 72 Dulard Recreation Center located at 1330 Dr. Beatrice Road in Terrio, Louisiana. They call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 11, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. And fourth, an ordinance to amend and supplement ordinance number 9277, which authorized the issuance by the Terrebonne Parish not to exceed $6 million of its public library sales tax bond series 2021, ratifying the sale of the bonds to Raymond James and Associates Incorporated and providing for other matters in connection with their with and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 11, 2021, at 6.30 p.m. Second. Moved by Mr. Dirk Guidry, seconded by Mr. Gerald Michel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item C, Community Development and Planning Committee. Mr. Babin. Yes, I make a motion that the council accept and ratify the minutes of the Community Development and Planning Committee, a meeting held on July 26, 2021, and I have no public hearings. Motion, Mr. Danny Babin. Second is to Gerald Michel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Item D, the Budget and Finance Committee. Mr. John Amity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I make a motion that council accept and ratify the minutes of the Budget and Finance Committee meeting held on July 26, 2021, and I have four public hearings. Number one is an ordinance declaring a 2002 XL 4100 grade all unit number 3273 from the drainage department having a value of $15,000 as surplus and authorized said item to be disposed of by any legally approved methods and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 11th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Number two is an ordinance amending the 2021 budget of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government so as to adjust the 2021 adopted beginning fund balances and the net positions to actual as per the 2020 audited financial statements and call a public hearing on Wednesday, August 11th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Number three is an ordinance to amend the 2021 adopted operating budget and five-year capital outlay budget of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government for the following items and to provide for related matters. Local Government Assistance Program, $0. Petite Caillou Lock Structure, $4,686. Public Safety Fund, $750,000. Juvenile Detention, $100,000. Criminal Court Fund, $250,000. Dedicated Emergency Fund, $1,100,000. Coastal Restoration, $3,555. Severe Repetitive Loss Program, $209,199. Hazard Mitigation Grant, $6,660. <clears throat> FMA Flood Mitigation Program, $26,510. PDMC RFC Programs, $21,844. And call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 11th at 6.30 p.m. And number four is an ordinance to introduce uh, an ordinance to appropriate funds relative to for the adoption of the operating and capital budgets for the Terrible <laughs> Council on Aging Incorporated and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, August 11th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Motion by Mr. Um, John Amity, seconded by Mr. Steve Trosclair. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Number four, appointments to various boards, committees, and commissions. TGMC Hospital Service District Number One Board. Two expiring terms. Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike Fake has been nominated for consideration of reappointment to the Terrebonne General Medical Center's Board of Commissioners, representing a civic organization. The South Louisiana Chapter of CPAs nominates Ms. Angelique Bark, CPA, who has submitted an application and resume to be reappointed to serve on the Hospital Service District Number One Board, representing said chapter. Open, close, and appoint. Motion to open, close, and appoint by Mr. Danny Babin, seconded by Mr. Gerald Michel and John Amity. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? They are reappointed. Uh, item B, Fire Protection District Number 8, one expired term. Mr. Patrick Bourgeois submits an application and resume for consideration. Motion to open and close and appoint. Motion to open and close and appoint by Mr. John Amity. Second. Second to Mr. Danny Babin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Patrick Bourgeois is, sorry, has been appointed. Is Mr. Patrick Bourgeois in the audience? Okay. Item C, Homa Terrebonne Regional Planning Commission, one vacancy due to a resignation. Reverend Corian Gray and Miss Alicia Dove have submitted applications and resumes for consideration. Open, close, and vote. It, it's just uh, no. It, no. I believe, um, that's, that's one I, I believe we've, we have had a, um, uh, hold on, Miss Suzette, go ahead. There should be a notation on your revised agendas indicating that Ms. Dove has withdrawn her application. Okay, so Ms. Dove has, has withdrawn her application request, so uh, the only open, applicant currently is Mr. Uh, Reverend Gray. Uh, open, close, and appoint by Mr. Danny Babin. Second, Second Mr. Gerald Michel. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any oppose? All right, Mr. Gray, is Mr. Gray in here? Nope. All right. Item D. Downtown Development Corporation, one expired term representing the Historic Society. The Historic Society nominates Ms. Tracy Harthorn, who has submitted an application, a resume for consideration. M motion to open, close, and appoint Ms. Harthorn by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Second. Second to Mr. Danny Babin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item five, vacancies to various boards, committees, and commissions, fire protection district number five, has one unexpired term. The Veterans Memorial District has one unexpired term due to a resignation. Recreation District number 3A has one expired term and one unexpired term due to a resignation. <clears throat> Recreation District number six has one expiring term. A council members request discussion of. Councilman John Amity discussion and update relative to the parish's backlog of spraying and cutting grass, ditch culvert cleaning, and street repairs. Mr. Amity. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I put this on the agenda, and I've spoken with both Mr. Roman Public Works and um, Mr. Nakia in uh, Solid Waste and Vegetation, and asked them just to come give us an update on what's going on. Um, as some people saw on Monday night's um, committee meetings, we approve some purchase of equipment that's going to take six to eight months to come in. We get a lot of calls. Probably the biggest complaints I've gotten this year is on the grass, of course. And uh, so I just wanted to give them an opportunity to come and from the administration side, uh, give a, an explanation. Hopefully the public watching can catch this and, and um, share it amongst uh, their neighbors to, uh, to help maybe get a little bit better understanding of what we're up against. I know people are tired of hearing about COVID, but COVID has caused a lot of delays. And as a result, we we're just, backed up with what we're doing. So I'm not sure which one of you guys want to come first, but I'll, I'll welcome either one. And thank you guys for coming. It just so happened to work out with the, uh, the time frame that you don't have to wait till the end of the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, Clay Nockin, uh Solid Waste Vegetation Director, 279 Ashland Landfill Road. Uh, put a small report together that y'all should all have. Um, you know, the, uh, just to pretty much touch on the uh, roadside cutting, um, you know, I took this uh, division over January 1st uh, from uh, Public Works. Uh, they had a pretty good system in place. I just tweaked a few things that uh, seems to be working, but a lot of people don't understand the mileage that, uh, of roads that we have. Uh, 
we have uh, split up into a north side, south side route. The uh, north side route contains 130 miles of one way. Um, so, you know, you're looking at 260 miles of roadway that we cut. We're cutting that about, uh, our turnaround is about every six weeks. That's what our target is, depending on equipment. Um, I'll, um, then we have the south side that's uh, broken down into 14 routes with 152 miles. Again, that's uh, you know, a little over 300 miles of uh, roadway we cutting. Um, we have also, to help with this situation, have got the contractor um, that's on record, uh, Norris and Boudreaux, they're cutting about 38 miles of uh, grass on roadsides uh, in the um, uh, north part of the parish. Uh, I assigned them an area that uh, we needed them to cut and it's helping us out. Um, the, um, you know, um, my employees are always active. Uh, if we have an issue with um, a, a tractor down or uh, some, whatever reason it may be that they can't cut with their tractor, they're out there in the areas uh, weeding around the utility poles and the um, traffic uh, single signs and everything, trying to keep that up. Um, we had this year, we lost uh, one tractor, long arm tractor to a fire. Uh, actually, we, today we uh, got notice that the insurance company is going to give us $10,000 uh, for that. But again, y'all approved the uh, two new tractors. Uh, we are going to uh, order them probably tomorrow or Friday. Um, they, have, they will not be in until uh, 6 to 8 months at the uh, earliest. It could be longer, but uh, we have that. Um, we're looking at the 2022 budget of adding some more uh, tractors, but again, it's this, uh, uh, this morning at nine has a nine o'clock a.m. this morning. We had uh, two of the long arm tractors up and running because uh, we have a total of three. One, uh, one is uh, waiting on parts, uh, and that's another issue when they break down uh, these parts, uh, especially these uh, tractors here are New Hollands. They don't uh, make them uh, uh, and there's nobody that works on them around here. So we got to get the parts shipped in and and hunt and everything else. We have a uh, total of four uh, side cutters um, and we're doing that. Um, we're keeping up with uh, cutting on, uh, we're doing the, uh, the we come back after about seven to 21 days uh, in the, uh, uh, along the long roadways, not so much in the subdivisions, but in the long roadways and we spray in. Uh, but if the rain or something comes up that we can't, uh, whatever weather condition or equipment uh, break down, we have to, if we miss that window, there's no sense in wasting uh, the employee's time or uh, tax dollars on uh, chemicals when we're gonna be back in just a couple of weeks to cut. So, um, and the, the spraying is, uh, the, the gentleman earlier talked about uh, American Boulevard and 57, it's a state road. Uh, actually, the state uh, uh, started uh, last week, they did um, uh, 315, the large uh, Road, then they moved over to, uh, to 57, they did cut 57. But I did notice that they only have one track to work in as a sidearm, they're not cutting the ditches. So the ditches are staying tall, but they are making at least uh, one pass uh, on the roadside. So um, that that would I know that the area he's talking about was cut uh, yesterday, and today they was on 56 uh, headed down the by the last time I seen them. Um, that's pretty much what I have on the uh, tractors, uh, the routes of the tractors, or what they're doing. Um, then uh, we have another uh, contract that we're doing, uh, the boulevards and finished moors. That's a contract y'all renewed, uh, approved uh, this year that uh, went to Greenscapes. Um, plus we, ha we split that up, uh, we have a parish crew. All these areas are being cut um, that's on this contract here, which is about 90, uh, around uh, 92, 93 locations, something like that. Uh, they are being cut weekly. The litter is being picked up uh, out there. They they doing a great job. Uh, 
the my crews and the contractors uh, are doing great jobs uh, keeping it up. Um, so those are being done. Um, then we have the uh, various cemetery and locations. Another contract that all my office does is oversee this contract. We go around and make sure that these uh, areas are cut and that they are uh, being uh, followed by the contract. Then the other one that we do, it, it, and the reason I put all this on here is just to show you, we don't, I mean, it's not just the grass on the side of the roads we cut. We're, we're uh, out there um, actively all over. Uh, parks and grounds, um, we have that contract that oversee that exterior uh, lawn, to, and those last two are getting ready to expire and getting ready to uh, renew. Um, the parks and ground one is uh, <laughs> something that uh, we have that, uh, it's a, a few of District 11 parks a few, and a couple of other parks that we're doing that, um, that we have a contract on. And then finally on the litter, uh, it comes <coughs> along with the grass cutting. Uh, Sheriff's office um, went, um, <coughs> called me up Monday. They was able to get their second crew back. So now we uh, back at um, capacity with the uh, parish litter crews. Unfortunately, uh, uh, with the uh, sheriff's office litter crews, unfortunately with the parish, we we have open positions. Uh, they're being advertised. We're just not getting any applicants for uh, the litter crew. Uh, as soon as we get qualified applicants and get them hired, they'll be on the road picking up litter. But uh, I can tell you on the litter part, uh, the, from uh, the um, Boulevard finishing moors, um, uh, real quick, uh, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, uh, Mr. Ponville called me. Man, Clay, these guys out here, everything looks great. It's on West Side Boulevard. Man, there's no litter, no nothing. That afternoon, I went to take a ride out there just to uh, see for myself. And I was like, what is he talking about? Look at all this litter. And just that day, I, just, I mean, so we are being very proactive on the litter, but I mean, we just can't keep up with the, you know, with the I, I public. I think we all drive and, and see that. Um, and I didn't want to cut you shut if, nope. if you had something else, but this is exactly what I was looking for. I don't think the people and, you know, even us as council members don't realize how many miles of roads we have in the parish and, and what you guys have to go through as well as all the, the drainage ditches and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm hoping that with this information, the, the public has a little bit better understanding of, of the task that's up against us going on with short staff because of people not applying, um, delays in getting parts for equipment. I, I wanted a, a little bushing and they told me, I hope you got six to eight weeks. And it's like, man, you normally could pick that up at any hardware store, but not today. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll see we have some more lights. So I'll let those gentlemen ask their questions or make their comments. Mr. Babin. Yeah, Clay, thank you very much. <clears throat> you know, you're organizing this in a different way than it was done before, and I really appreciate that. I think, I think the citizens of this parish are going to see the fruits of that labor, and they are already, but in the months to come that we're going to see that. People just don't understand how shorthanded we have been in Terrebonne Parish and all departments. So it, it really affects. The only thing I want to bring up, and, and, and you had it on here about the second crew from the Sheriff's Department. As you know, you and I went to telephone yesterday afternoon when I was coming up Grand Kai Road from the, the, city, the jail coming up. The state cut yesterday, and it looked like a bomb zone had passed because there was so much litter on the road because it's all been in that tall grass. And I'm glad to see that the sheriff is going to have the second crew. But we really need to, maybe it's under Mr. Pondville, Maybe we need to talk to the sheriff some more about giving some tickets because we have laws on the, and ordinances on the books that people going to the dump, be it commercial or residents bringing stuff, have to have that stuff covered. And it's, on the, it's uncanny and, and almost unimaginable how much trash there was there yesterday. And it's just, and look, we have trash all over the parish, but if somebody wants to see what it really looks like, go from Thompson Road to the jail right now. And that's really a shame, but we should be punishing, in my opinion, the violators, okay? Not us having to spend money to go pick up behind them. But in any event, that's something that, that, that we can move on down the line. Just so you know, on the uh, litter part, uh, we just had a camera installed at uh, Grand Caillou and uh, Thompson, 
and I'm going to have access to that to try to identify some vehicles that's coming around, coming down with no tarps and stuff Good. like that, that uh, we might be able to identify who's the bad characters. Good. Because the same thing that we're having, Dirk and I on By Sally Road and Falgu Canal Road, people are going in the lower point. I'm sure Steve has his problems down in the Montague Pornish area. People going down there and, and you know, it's scrappers who take these tires, they cut the metal out the inside, and instead of going to the dump with it, we would take for nothing, they go dump it on the road. What, 147 or something? You know, about a month ago, you guys had to go pick up. So, you know, if people don't want Big Brother looking at them all the time, then then maybe let's stop doing those things, or, or police may be giving them some tickets. <coughs> but the cameras will definitely help, for sure. But thank you, Clay, for the job that you're doing. Mr. Michel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, and, you know, for about six, eight months, things were getting really, really bad, and you can just see the vast improvement, and, and you can tell that the people who are supposed to be out there working and doing this stuff are doing it. But the, the concerns that, that come up to me are uh, two of them, and the, I'm going to give you two specifics, but really there's a lot of people with the same complaints. One is on the areas where they go and spray. They don't necessarily go in, in uh, with a weed eater or do something to, to pick up the, uh, the the tall weeds and the cattails and all of that stuff. Is there anything that can be done about that specifically? They just sent me a picture today from um, the houses behind Ziegler and behind Buque, that that lateral dish there. That that uh, you're gonna have to address that with uh, Mr. Rome. He handles all the laterals and the I only handle roadside. Okay, all right, and so my other one is lateral as well. We'll bring it up in a second. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Harding. <clears throat> I actually have the fortune to be the superintendent of DOTD, Lafourche Parish, and one part of that was indeed for DOTD. One part of that was maintaining the second largest parish in reference to highway miles in the state of Louisiana. I can understand a lot of things that's being said here. I even understand your position and perhaps even Mr. Rome's position. Again, like some other instances, there are some modifications that could be made here. We understand a lot of people making complaints between, it makes a difference between the state and the parish road. When a person in Turbine Parish rides down the highways, sometimes they don't even figure out, they can't figure out which is state, which is parish. But one problem that I encountered in my experience, number one, whether your route is doing right, you inherited a route, you was the right? Discretion as the chairman, a text. Whether the route was done right. It, it's, it's, it's a lot of things that could be incorporated in there because when I inherited, I had to change a few things. I inherited a lot of bad equipment. Some of that equipment can actually go on us, but then if you inherit equipment in the summertime, most of the maintenance that you could be doing, or ha uh, all, all the things that you could be doing, that can be done in the wintertime. That's, that's prevention and preparing for, for that season. I'm saying this, you know what I mean, and really I'm being honest about that because I see there is a problem. I see there is a problem. It's, it's the fact that who does the maintenance? One of the problems that I had, I went to, the, uh, to uh, I was brought in, similar to what you were, and we were trying to fix a problem. My problem was the mechanic. I couldn't keep the tractors on the road. Do we have a mechanic problem? No, we don't. I have a mechanic on staff that's uh, very good at what he's doing. Okay. So... We had no information about, well, we can talk about this, no information that these tra tractors are going out when the summertime comes, it's hardest to cut this grass at the high as it is. It, the tractors work more harder. The spraying and cutting works together. And this is where I feel as if, and I've seen that these contracts that we actually making, and we put this man in that position, coming from over here from Mr. Rome, and all of this, I figured then it wasn't going to work out, but it will take some time. I said that to myself and I roll with the punches. But we paying a lot of money for contracts for this man right here. He got increased, he got paid, uh, people. He just uh, uh, um, 
relinquish some of his, uh, his responsibility to you. We're paying a lot of money for us to not spray and not cut and have rundown equipment, and I'm speaking for the people. We have to get it in, in order. Now, another thing I want to say to the people that's sitting up here as my colleagues, there's a problem with the state and a problem with the parish. Be honest with you, both of us have run down equipment. We need better um, equipment and we need more personnel. It's the hardest thing is the personnel. But most of the time, in, in my opinion, we have to do more spraying. I want to ask a question. Do we actually have the um, certified sprayers? Yes. Um, my uh, operating supervisor is a uh, licensed sprayer. All right. And he has certain tanks that he has? Yes. Uh, thousands or 500s? Uh, uh, I think it's a 500 gallon tank. 500 gallon tanks. So, 500 gallon tank will spray 25 square acres uh, each, with each tank. Correct. Uh, yeah, I, I, being, okay. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, I just recently put on I was put, put on Facebook with about ce uh, cemeteries and especially the cemetery. Could you say for the public what cemeteries that we we are responsible for that you oversee that we have contracts for? I don't I don't eat conflicts either. It's um, it's going to be uh, um, South Down Cemetery, Bislam Cemetery, and um, let me see what the other one. Halfway. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was put on uh, uh, on on Facebook and put on blast about the South Down Cemetery. Uh, so the side cutters that you actually have, though, they they actually how many of those you have? That is on a con that particular thing's on a contract, but side cutters I have four with one broke down right now. Four or well, one broke down. And they really cut uh, one side, side mount cuts three acres, well, one acre per hour, so that's three acres an hour if you have them going down there. Um, Y'all bear with me. So I want to actually uh, say this too because we got a lot of contracts that are involved with that and a lot of spraying and stuff, but I'm not really trying to put it out there. I'm not going to set up here and just say I totally agree with everything. I think you're doing a, you're doing a great job. I think Mr. Rome is doing a great job. But I'm not sitting here trying to sugarcoat, no, sugarcoat nothing for nobody. But I think there is a problem that we need to actually provide you with better equipment, more people, and I think part of your route and your system, me personally, route and the system may be actually a little bit on your rotation could be a little bit different from what it is, in my <coughs> professional opinion. The, just so you know that part of the, um, the MyGov system that, uh, that Mr. Hughes talked about, he says that solid waste is taking a while because we're more detailed, that is some of the stuff that's getting put into that system, but it's not going to happen overnight because we're very, uh, very detailed on the uh, stuff. Yeah, and I, I can understand those uh, those extended arms. We, we call them slip mowers, and and it is uh, they are necessary to cut the other side of the ditch. Uh, I can't speak for the state, but then I can say well, we can actually have our our services, and that's very very important, especially the type of terrain that we have down those bayous. So those are very very important, and I think uh, we as the government. Six months, six months them arriving, I think six months from now it's going to be very, very cold and the grass is going to be killed anyway. So that's a timing thing. That's what really the first thing I saw, that somewhere in, uh, somebody in the maintenance department could have figured that out, that these things are not going to work and we're going to need them at the most. They broke. Right. And that's why I bought it to you all at this time to try to get it so I can have it for the next grass cutting season. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Mr. Trosclair. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And in all fairness to Mr. Nakan, uh, he's only took been having this department for six months, basically six months. And he, uh, you know, he, he graciously took this because it was asked of him to take it from another another department. And he, uh, his expertise is solid waste. So I'm sure it was a, it's, a, it's a learning curve for Mr. Nakan as well as, you know, uh, 
trying to get this thing ironed out, try to talk to people that know this business and try to get this thing done. So, Clay, you're doing a great job. Uh, no doubt in the mind, in my mind. I, I, but, you know, you have to, people have to realize that change don't happen overnight. I mean, it takes, especially in government. I mean, in private industry, it takes a while. In government, it's almost phenomenal. So you are doing a good job, and I just want people to realize and understand that Clay's only had this position for relatively well, started in January. He got it in January. By the time he got everything transferred, it was close to the end of January. The personnel, everybody that he knew he had to work with, and we're only in the middle of July now. So you know, basically six months is what he, he's had, and he's done a good job in six months. I mean, a lot has been accomplished. And we are moving in the right direction. I want everybody to know that this parish is moving. Is the grass being cut every day? Like, are the tractors moving every day? Probably not. For one thing, you got monsoon. I mean, last month it only rained twice. You know, the first time it rained for 16 days, the second time it rained for 15 days. Okay? So it's hard to cut grass in those conditions. And it's not just a drizzling, misty rain we get. We're getting downpours. We're getting drenching rains. So I just want to, you know, just back you up on that, Clay. I know, I know you putting your whole heart in this thing. It's out of your realm of expertise, and you're doing a bang, bang up job, in my opinion. Thank you. Yeah, Clay. Thank you very much. I've learned more about lawnmowers tonight than I think I would have uh, <laughs> thought I would have learned. But uh, uh, I, I think you're doing uh, a great job. You know, I don't get a whole lot of complaints from from your, what you have, what you oversee. You know, most of what I get complaints are state highways that aren't cut, uh, and of course, what Mr. Rome is is uh, about to come address uh, for us. But uh, I just want to say you're doing a good job. I, I understand your challenges, and I think with all the challenges, I think you're doing the best that I believe you can do with with the challenges that you face. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rome. Good evening, David Rome, Public Works Director, Terrebonne Parish, address of 206 Government Street, Gray, Louisiana. Um, if I may, just clarify, uh, Mr. Uh, Clay Knockhand is doing an outstanding job with vegetation, which is why it was moved to his department, because he could better fund the resources that were necessary for it to be a true vegetation program. Uh, prior to vegetation was always a quasi public works uh, venture that was uh, partially paid for out of drainage, partially paid out of roads and bridges, and there was not a, a proper way to fund a, a division as important as that. And I think Mr. Uh, Knockhan has definitely taken us in the right directions with that. Uh, with that being said, I'll uh, give a quick update on the uh, vegetation maintenance contract, which, as uh, Mr. Clay said, uh, is all of our lateral ditches within the parish drainage and, and um, levees that are cut by a contractor. Uh, this is and always has been done uh, under contract for several various reasons. Um, my understanding, speaking with them, they have completed the first cycle, which started at the end of February, and it took them close to four months to do that because of um, the weather that we have been experiencing since March. As Mr. Trost class said, it's, very, it's only rained twice. It's just <laughs> for prolonged periods of time. Um, I believe uh, we're at 60 inches of rain so far this year, and on an uh, average year, Terrebonne Parish uh, gets 63 inches. So we're about three inches away, so about two days away from uh, breaking our annual record for rainfall, uh, which is a huge portion as to why the, the contractors and our parish uh, vegetation maintainers are, are behind on it. Um, it is a waste of taxpayers' money to spray when it gets washed away in less than an hour or a day. It, it's, it's, it's under best circumstances have at least 12 to 24 hours of dry weather uh, before the application um, takes complete effect. Um, they are starting the second um, 
uh, cycle of cutting and spraying, and we have added uh, some additional areas to it to, to, to better serve the communities, especially regarding the lilies and um, the abundance of them being that we have not had a cold winter in several years. Um, we also have a, um, a contractor that will be coming down to do uh, some lily removal in some of our bodies of water, um, which is more preferable than spraying or chopping them because you're actually removing the seeds from the, the environment, and therefore we're hoping that this will help uh, mitigate uh, future blossoms of the uh, hyacinthian uh, uh, water lily. Um, Primarily, I would like to give you all a quick update on our road repair and the status of where we have been at. Um, as Mr. Amadi had said, uh, COVID hit us very hard last year. We, we were able to make all of our, our, our goals on our annual budget with expenditures and, and getting what projects we could. However, uh, certain things did get delayed more than others due to Contractors having issues, our people having issues with COVID. Um, this year has been far more successful. We have done uh, $2.2 million worth of road repairs uh, throughout the parish. Um, and, and just to go back to what Mr. Knockhan had said about the mileages, we have about 600 miles of road in Terrebonne Parish. And the, the current formula for repair is about $1.25 million per mile. So you can go ahead and do the math on on how much uh, uh, we would cost to replace all our roads in our parish. But so far with uh, concrete replacement, shell road replacement, uh, well, uh, uh, grading, shelling, um, and also uh, pavement markings, we've spent $2.2 million. Right now we have um, one and a half million dollars allocated for an asphalt project that we just finalized the final plans on and we hope to have the bid within the next few weeks. That too was a project that should have been off the ground sooner, but due to uh, COVID and several other factors, it, it was uh, delayed. Um, we also have uh, another pavement marking um, project to the tune of uh, 217,000 dollars that is um, about to go through the process of bidding. Y'all just approved the, uh, the first phase of it, um, I think, the last council meeting. And then uh, remaining for the year, we have a uh, million dollars in the Transportation Trust Fund uh, account. We also have $804,000 remaining in our operational uh, road repair accounts. And we also have $24,900 remaining for remaining curbs. Um, given the, the current um, environment, we're on track to spend about $5.7 million on our roads this year alone. COVID, rain, all of that included. Any questions? Mr. Amity? Yeah, <clears throat> Mr. Rome, the asphalt contract that you're talking about, that's not one road project. That's the many repairs throughout the pro parish? The, the, the $1.5 million is uh, $1.5 million that was alloc allocated specifically for this one uh, asphalt project. So what happened to the contract that we do every year for asphalt? That's taken that up? We, one we project? Don't, we, don't typ we typically uh, bid out all of our asphalt projects, which are usually small, uh, $200,000, $300,000. This is a culmination of all of that, of that work together. So like last year, we did a bunch of spot repairs. We're not doing that this year? We do, and we do that underneath our, our operational uh, account, which... Um, last year, we did it under Barrier. I'm sorry? Last year, we did it under Barrier. They did do a project for us, yes, sir. But yeah, that was not I, I, I did a lot in my area. That's why I was asking. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. We, we do do uh, full depth patching, but this is an overlay patching. Uh, all in one uh, project that's throughout the parish, all all nine districts. That's what I was asking. Yes. Okay. Sorry. And and I want to thank you and Mr. Knocking again for uh, for coming and giving us this update. Um, it helps us to understand it. I know we could all go individually, but we're all right here right now in, in one sitting, so we can we can get a better understanding. So when our constituents call us, we can give them intelligent answers. That's all we're looking for. So again, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, Mr. Michel has some questions as well. Thank you, Mr. Amity. Mr. Michel? 
Thank you. How you doing, sir? Um, okay, so uh, the questions that I was asking earlier about uh, the lateral ditches behind Ziegler and Buquet houses that were sprayed, and uh, and there's a lot of weeds, uh, and I, I don't know if there's cattails so, there or not, but that we're, we're talking about the lateral ditch that's actually in between the, the yards. That, yes. That's a very limited uh, servitude because of the, the encroachment yes. by the, the, the plants. Um, what we're hoping is... Uh, I believe Mr. Dove has asked for some money for our various drainage projects, and one of is for us to start doing um, erosion control, which is similar to what we did on Mike Street and on Evelyn Street on uh, the east side, where it's a minimal, we go in, it's a one-time, they, they, they use an epoxy cement to, to armor the, the, the ditch, and therefore you don't have to worry about weeds or, gra or any vegetation growing out of it it's just a matter of getting in there with a fire hose or some type of high pressure line and blowing it out we've we've done it so far in three places throughout the parish is uh, is behind magnolia courtyard on that list that is one of the ones that we have identified that we we there's no way to get equipment in there um in order to to do what needs to be done other than go in there armor it do the 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 erosion control okay, so yes just, sir that is one of those things i, I would like to do there, but if you go into that they have fenced in backyards if you go into their house and go to the, go to the backyard it, it, it uh, declines at the end as it approaches the fence, and the fence is starting to tilt outward. Yes. And that's going to, as you know, do nothing but get worse. So, right. Um, now, um, some time ago, years ago, we discussed um, behind Broadmoor Avenue, between the houses on Broadmoor and Collins, uh, and some of those fences were falling. It's the same situation. Okay. There, there, there's been a, a, a endemic uh, problem of houses historically encroaching onto our servitudes with little to no enforcement and that's the result of it i mean if we okay. can't get a piece of equipment back that to properly maintain it the really only option is either a have everyone go remove their fences off of the, the existing servitude or we come up with inventive ways to to think outside the box by using methods such as the the, the erosion control and the epoxy concrete um, um Okay, and I mean, the particular one I'm talking about uh, that we had talked about before was on the 700 block. They got the 200 block where you can't get, I mean, are we enforcing these encroachment offenses? Um, we, we do to the best of our ability. Mr. Pulaski and I are, are constant in const I contact. When, when it goes through the proper channels, uh, especially if they're building a fence, typically if they go into a servitude, it's required that they receive a letter of no objection through my office. Um, Mr. Pulaski, make sure that 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 letter has is issued before they are issued a permit to uh, put the fence up. But if someone's putting up a fence without a permit, or they're not, chances are they're not getting a letter of no objection either. And so, uh, so are we doing anything to enforce that, even though it might have been 20 years ago? That, I, don't know, I don't know the best answer. I'm just well, it, 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 it's. It, at, at some point, um, we have tried uh, forcing um, some enforcement on, on the encroachment issue. However, it's, it's, it's very endemic, and it, it would take uh, a lot of effort on the council's port part in order to, to stymie it and then to reverse it. Okay, and, and I have, let, uh, let me move on so they can talk, but I have two more issues. One, and you may have, uh, you were talking about markings. Are you talking about like arrows and lines in the road and that Correct. sort of thing? Uh, okay. the, the striping, the yellow striping, the white striping, the marking, the rave, pa the reflective pavement markings, all of that. Yes, sir. Okay, because uh, uh, is it on your list to do West Side Boulevard between Canadas and? It's. All, all together, the project, our project uh, is $3.6 million. So with the money that we have allocated so far, we should be able to do a little less than half of what's on there. But yes, I believe Westside Boulevard and, and mo what we're trying to focus right now on is all the major thoroughfares. We were able to complete Industrial Boulevard as part of the project with the replacement of the bridge. Uh, but there are uh, several... Um, Val High is another one that, that I believe is a, a, a issue that, that we'll also on have on that list. Okay, and then I have five road issues uh, and just answer them. Uh, but the first one is Alma and Westside Boulevard, as it, as it goes into Broadmoor, there's, there's about, I don't know, uh, maybe 70 or 80 yards, maybe 100 yards uh, 
that's been in terrible shape is black topped on that portion. Uh, Mr. Michel, uh, is it is it possible for you to get him a list? Uh, only because if each one of us go over, over all of our individual, I probably have about 30 or 40 I could go over with you. We'd just be here all night. Send an email. Uh, um, if you could communicate with him, uh, I'd appreciate it. Unless there's something, one of these that you really would like to highlight? Well, that's one of that, that, that's been for years. And the other one is D Street. So, uh, you know, that's the one with the problem, uh, uh, with the questionable property right gotcha. there. Okay, so uh, we can talk about those later if you like. If we could, uh, I'd sure. be more than happy to address them, and 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 it would be I'll be better prepared. With, I'll have the the actual project lists in front of me. They are quite extensive, so it's very hard for me to retain them to memory. All right, no, that's not, not a problem. I appreciate everything you do, sir. Yes, sir. And I actually intend, Mr. Rome, to put mine in an email that I'm going to send to you, so that way you can research them and respond as far as where the status of them are, uh, Mr. Babin. And hey, Mr. Rome, you you mentioned on on the black topping 1.4 million. Uh, what, what is the total on uh, one one point five million dollars right now allocated for that project? Okay, how many miles does that cover? Whew. Uh, <laughs> well, it, I, I can't quantify it in miles. Uh, it it it's because it's so sp sporadic throughout the the uh, the parish. Uh, I believe the only council person who does not have asphalt that's allocated for her district is Miss Domain because she has nothing but concrete. Uh, uh, roads and the one asphalt road that she does have does need some work on it, but it it would be more economical for us to repair it in house. And and that's my point in bringing it up. The 1.5 million dollars does not go very far. Okay, when we talk about the amount of asphalt roads that we have in the past, I mean, Mulberry subdivision probably has two miles of it, if you or maybe more, if you just take it. And I know Dirk has plenty oh, yeah. in his particular area. So I, I just want everybody to know that we're going after the work. It's been, it's been prioritized, the, well, the worst yeah. spots. Yes, sir. And, and then you're going to move from there. And hopefully we can find some more money to, to do those things. Yeah. This is this is $1.5 million more than I've been allocated in the last nine years. And, no, and, I, and I know that, and I, that's why I'm happy to see it going. But it's not going to blacktop the entire parish, yeah. for sure. $1.2 million per mile. Right. Thank you, Mr. Rome. Yes, sir. Mr. Harding. Yeah, and just to add on that too, because different roads require different types of maintenance, such such as uh, uh, highs uh, compressed and yada yada, the width of the road and uh, repairs. But then there's a different type of repair in reference to you have hot mix and cold mix. And some of the areas that you actually have, do you actually apply cold mix to any of these areas? Uh, uh, that we actually have within the parish? Yes, sir. We do. We, we, we on average get somewhere between 500 and 700 tons of coal mix annually. Uh, and that's usually used as a temporary fix until we can either replace the panel properly um, or use it as a, a long term solution in a low traffic area. Because I'm sure, as you know, coal patch is very, very durable if it's applied properly. If, if the site is cleaned, if there's a proper amount of tack used, and it's compressed properly. Um, I, I know some coal patch that we've done, uh, especially downtown, that has lasted at least nine years so far uh, with good success. But yes, sir. Yeah, and, and do we actually own a bump cutter? I'm sorry? A, a bone cutter. No, we do. We, we own a, a grinder. So what we typically do is we grind out the area that we're using it on, remove any of the loose aggregate, and then apply the tack and then the coal mix. Yeah. Do we need one in, in that particular department? Actually, uh, when y'all get my budget uh, later on this year, I, I have some, some equipment such as that on there. Yeah, okay then. Uh, you mentioned something else earlier in reference to funding. We, we had Mr. Nakang up here, and then that was a, a funding situation. Whereas, in, and uh, if there is a problem in these either of the two, I think that's what we have to address because that's where our complaints is coming from our people at. Our road, roads, our lateral ditches, our tall grass. I had a lady on 315, even though it's a state highway, we have a problem within our uh, parish, so we have to work with the state and the parish together. I'm not trying to bash you guys, but I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat this, that, and the other one. We've got a problem, we got a problem, we're going to fix it. And I'm just I'm not going to kick the, coat, uh, the can down the road. Not no more. 
We're running on a road. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. And Mr. Rome, just for those who may not understand what the cold patch is, that's the, the that is the asphalt that they pour into the holes, and it just mixes as people it packs down as people drive over it. Yes, sir. It, it's to fill it's thermogenic, so it, with the compression, it, it sticks gotcha. together. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for yes, uh, coming. Well, and I, right well. and I know we did things a little out of order, and we went ahead and uh, appointed all of the appointments uh, uh, early. And uh, to see Mr. Mike Fike is in the audience, he just got appointed to uh, the to reappointed to the Terrible General Board. Before we go into public hearing, Mr. Fake, did you want to uh, address the council or say anything? Of course, you were reappointed. Uh, we we we, are, we were rather quick on that, so I. I uh, Fake, two thirty Tiger Tail Road. I uh, apologize. I was kind of following the agenda. I didn't realize y'all had deviated, but I did want to come and thank thank all of you for your um, for your uh, consideration in reappointing me and Miss Barker. She uh, she couldn't be here tonight for she had a previous family engagement so she wanted me to pass along her thanks too and and personally I, I want to thank all of you for not only the commitment that you make to this community but also the the commitment that you make to to Terrebonne General um, the between all of all of the council members and the administration um, you guys stepped up and helped us out to to try to get you know, 20,000 people vaccinated in this parish at the Civic Center. Without the, without the use of that Civic Center, we'd have never, never been able to, to accomplish what we did. Unfortunately, as y'all all well know, I think y'all got a report from Mr. Hughes that we're seeing a, a, another surge. And and um, I, I don't know where this, this is going to take us. Uh, I'm not a medical person, but I do know that the, the hospitals, both ours and Chabert, and even Saint Anne, and, and some of the surrounding areas are are almost triple the amount of amount of patients that are in the hospital. Uh, so, once again, I I, I just want to thank all of you for 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 the commitment and 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 the support of all of our healthcare workers in this parish. Um, it's a very um, it's a tough job they go through right now. Besides the normal type of work, now the the, the extra stress is added and, and uh, you know, wish well for, for all of our families and, and hope to be your continued support. This is, this is my last term on the board. It's been a, a fantastic experience, very rewarding. Uh, worked with some wonderful people over there and got to work with some wonderful board members, one of them, one of them sitting right back there, uh, Neil Marlborough. And so it's a, it's a great opportunity for anyone that that wants to serve, and again, once again, appreciate all the all the help and commitment that that you guys make. So, thank you very thank much. Thank you for thank serving. We have a motion to go to public hearing by Mr. John Amity, seconded by uh, Miss uh, Jessica Domingue. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're in public hearing. Item A: An ordinance to revoke ordinance number ninety nine one one five, which was signed in error as a duplicate to ordinance number nine one zero six, and to reissue declaration by the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government of its intent to acquire full ownership of a tract of land bearing Terrebonne Parish parcel ID number four one eight seven six with an owner of record as being E.M. Glenn Incorporated. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion, Motion to close by Mr. Uh, Michel, seconded by Mr. Babin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion adopted by Mr. Michel. Second. Seconded by Mr. Babin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ordinance is adopted. Item B, an ordinance to amend the 2021 adopted operating budget and five-year capital outlay budget and budgeted positions of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government for the following items and to provide for related matters. 11B retention pond property and North Yard extension, $1 million. Terrebonne homeless shelter, $82,650. Sanitation, $316,181. Head Start program, $51,165. Skate Park, $40,000. Head Start Program, $203,405. Housing and Human Services, $6,587. Delete one admin coordinator one and add one program specialist. The juvenile detention, $0 change, but add two part-time LPNs grade 206 and delete two part-time LPNs grade 107. 
Marshall's office, zero dollar change, but add one office manager, delete one chief deputy. CSBG program, a zero dollar change, but add one human development administrative grade 210 and delete one human development administrati administrative grade 211, add one administrative coordinator one. Transit department, zero dollar change, but add one admin tech two grade 106, delete one admin tech two grade 102. And the parish-wide recreation, zero dollar change, add one part-time senior groundsman. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion to, Motion to close, Mr. Dirk Guidry, seconded by Mr. Uh, Danny Babin. All in favor say aye. aye. Any oppose? Motion to adopt. Sir. Motion to adopt. By Mr. Danny Babin, seconded by Mr. Dirk Guidry. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any oppose? Ordinance is adopted. Item C, an ordinance to amend the 2021 adopted operating budget and five-year capital outlay budget and budgeted positions of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government for the following items and to provide for related matters. American Rescue Plan, $22,401,879. Public wants. Public twice, third time public. Motion to close. Motion to close by Mr. Babin, seconded by Mr. Dirk Guidry. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion to adopt. Uh, before, motion to adopt by Mr. Dirk Guidry, seconded by Mr. Steve Trosclair. Uh, Ms. Molden. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, I just wanted to take this time to kind of go over real quick what we have in the plan for the American Rescue Money, um, as well as answer some questions or anything else that may have come up. Um, so, let's see if this will work. Where do I point it? To? So I'm doing. You want to just click it for me, <laughs> so we can try to get this done and get out of here. Um, okay. So the American Rescue Plan was um, signed into law uh, March 11th, 2021. So we know that Terrible and Parish was allotted. Um, $44,803,000. We have received to date $22.4 million of that, and we suspect to, or we expect to get the remaining $22.4 million um, within the next 12 months. Uh, so the budget amendment that we are discussing right now and that is presented tonight is to allocate that 22.4 that we have already received. But what we're going to discuss is going to be the full plan for the 44.8 million. And what will happen is the remaining 22.4 million will be put into our 2022 original budget. So when we discuss that starting in October, um, that'll come up there. Um, next one. Okay, so just some of the eligible uses. There's four primary um, eligible uses. The first one is to respond to the public health emergency um, and its negative economic impacts. So this focuses highly on helping um, citizens, uh, small businesses, nonprofits. It also helps with um, those industries that were impacted, so your tourism and your hospitality and travel. Uh, respond to workers performing essential work. Uh, the provision of government services to the extent of the reduction in revenue. So it allows us to calculate what our reduction in revenue was because of the pandemic comparing 2021 to 2020, sorry, 2020 to 2019, and then we can do 2021 to 2020, and it goes all the way through 2024. Um, the important note, go back, I'm sorry. The important note of that reduction in revenue is this is where the portion of this funding that can be used for a lot of things. It's a very broad uh, use of the funding, whereas everything else is kind of um, isolated. The infrastructure, of course, is that water, sewer, or broadband. So these are the only three areas of infrastructure that this general funding can be used. That reduction in revenue can be used for other infrastructure, but generally it can only be used for the water, sewer, and broadband. Next, please. Uh, this is the list of the ineligible uses of funds. We won't really go over this. Um, you know, it talks about that general infrastructure of spending outside of the water, sewer, and broadband. Again, the revenue reduction, revenue loss can be used for general infrastructure, but overall, the money can't be. Um, next is, uh, next one, please. Okay, so when we first started this, 
and we knew that we were able to use the money to respond to the public health emergency, and we knew that this revenue lost was what was a broad use of the funding. We reached out to our outside agencies that are governmental entities that if they needed to, they would come to us for funding if they were in you know, some trouble because of the pandemic. So we asked them to calculate their lost revenue, same way we calculated our lost revenue. And um, especially with the hospital and with TARC, we asked what COVID-related expenses did you have? So for the hospital, a lot of that money is related to um, the vaccines that were given out. So the cost should do that. So after they submitted everything, we reviewed it. Um, this is the breakdown of how it is going to be done. These individuals, uh, entities will receive this funding through a subrecipient agreement. So it is federal money. There is a lot of federal guidelines that have to be passed. Uh, followed, so we will go through that with them with the subrecipient agreements. They will also have to report to me. Um, we haven't determined yet if it's going to be quarterly or annually or whatever until the funding has been spent. I have to report all of it to the United States Treasury. So depending on how I have to report it and when is how we will determine that with them. Another thing to note for here is the hospital and the sheriff's office. So the budget amendment for them this time is for half. So they only receive half of that allotment and then they'll receive the other half next year. Next, please. Um, so the other part of this, the response to the public health emergency is our grants. So we are going to do small business grants as well as nonprofit grants. Um, we have a total of a million allotted to them. This year it will be 500,000 and we'll do 500,000 next year. We have a committee made up of uh, myself, Chris Pulaski, and Mark Black to determine how we are going to administer this, who is eligible, how they apply. That information has not been determined yet. We will get that to the council. We'll make a presentation to the council when we have that set up, and we'll have it um, on our you know, Facebook page, on the internet. Um, we'll get with Martin Falls, have some things advertised so that those individuals that do qualify this will know. But at this point, we don't have that worked out yet. There's a lot of details we have to look at. Um, another part of this is our after school programs. So we are allowed to use this funding to help with um, the student needs um, and the academic needs of them. This is something that we have done in the budget for the past couple of years. So this is allowing us to fund it using this instead of using some of our general fund money. So that would be about $25,000 um, each year. The Village East Community Center, we currently have um, a project set up for this. I think it's 600 or 650,000. Um, knowing all, based on what the Mechanicville Community Center and some other properties that have been built for, that 600 is not going to be enough. Um, this money can be used for this community center to allow us to reach those demographics that were hit hard with the pandemic. Um, this community center can be something that will be used for um, legal aid, um, assistance with social work, get the you know health out there, and you know all of these kind of things. So that's what this community center will be used for. Next, please. So the last part is our tourism. Um, so we all know that that is a really impacted area. So we have the boardwalk improvements. Um, there are several places along the boardwalk that need to be improved. One thing that we'd like to push, and you'll see part of this um, later on, is the whole downtown area. We have some other funding coming from the state that's going to do the downtown corridor, um, Boulanger Street Park. So helping to improve the boardwalk will help us to be able to promote all of it. And it's also for the safety of the tourists that are coming to the area. Uh, La Petite Theater, so there's a 250,000. So one thing to note on this, I don't know if you guys remember, a couple of months ago we did a budget amendment for 250,000. At that time, we were not certain if this money could be used for that. I don't even think we had had the guidance, but they needed it to be able to move forward with their bid. So when we got the information and we knew that we could use it, that's what we're doing here. So all that we are doing here is adding the rescue plan 250 to the project and we are taking out the general fund 250 out of the project and putting it back into uh, general fund. 
Then we also have um, a landing along Highway 56 that we are going to purchase and we are going to refurbish and get it set up to be um, used for the public, uh, promote that tourism, promote that fishing industry as well uh, down the bayou. So um, the other thing, and I think this is one, I know that Chris Pulaski's department is going to benefit from this significantly, is during the pandemic, we did not let any employees go. But if there was an open position, we didn't fill it, and we actually cut some of them from the budget to help with the budget constraints. This money is allowing us to put those cut positions back into the budget. Um, so this is a list and who it is. So you have um, district attorney, planning, engineering, um, police department, fire department. So this is um, about 3.2 million total, but it'll be used all the way through 2024. So hopefully by the time 2024 comes around, everything's picked back up and we'll be able to pick up the funding and um, be able to continue with that. So the next part is um, the affordable housing. So we all know we have the Parkwood Place. Mm -hmm. um, this was an infrastructure development that was done through a grant um, with HUD and CDBG. Um, a condition of that grant, so that way we don't have to pay this development money back, was that we reach a certain threshold of having low to income um, houses in there, rental properties, and all of this. Um, Kelly Cunningham, our Director of Housing and Human Services, recently had some information from our state representative that if we can provide uh, 36 homes to low-income persons by 2022, they will consider that we have met the obligation. So at that point, we won't have to um, pay the initial um, $3.1 back. So we did put the total 3.18 million in here for this year, so that way we can get started. So that way, by the time they start looking at us in 2022, we can show that hopefully we've met the objective, and if not, that we are on the right path to meet it, and we don't have to wait to do budget amendments and put the funding back in place. So next is... Um, the reduction in revenue. So like I mentioned earlier, this reduction in revenue calculation can be used for a broader use of the funding. The calculation that we did was based on a formula that the United States Treasury gave us, comparing the years, taking out some grants, they allowed us to do a growth calculation, and our total for this year is 8.3 million. So based on that, we have several different projects or purchases that we'd like to do. Um, the first one is your marshal's office. This is to purchase some vehicles for them. Their fleet of vehicles is very outdated. It has not been replaced or replenished. Their vehicles are probably spending more time in the shop to get repaired than they are actually on the road. Um, we also have the $40,000 um, for a response vehicle for the Office of Emergency Preparedness. So this would be considered a response vehicle for the assistant director over there. During the year of 2020, the district attorney's office took a big hit because of there was no tickets being written, so there was no collection of ticket revenue. So they had to actually contribute to us 110,000 that they had to borrow. So we're able to use this money to replenish or uh, reimburse them for that. Currently, we are using the building on Park Avenue, um, 8028 Park Avenue. It is a building that the DA's office owns, but HPD is using it. So we are proposing to use that money to purchase that building so that HPD can have it and it can be um, updated and stuff as needed. The Brady Road Bridge replacement, we have some money in this project currently, so this is just adding some additional money to this. The purpose of this is we want to be able to um, increase the load that the bridge can hold. We want to be able to make sure that the fire trucks can get through it, and we want to make sure that it is accessible and it has an evacuation plan for those residents. We have tried getting some state money over the past couple years, and we have not been successful, so we're going to move forward to try to fund it with local money. Uh, the Bayou Country Sports Park, this is just a match for the capital outlay money that we've been received. <laughs> 
the Homa Heights Fitness Park. So some people may know this. I think it's sometimes referred to as the Twin Span Park, um, and it has been discussed for several years. Just recently, we have awarded a um, contract with DOTD to do the sidewalk. So that sports fitness park area is going to have a sidewalk. So since we're moving forward with that, we'd like to add the additional funding so that way we can continue with how that park and that uh, drawn out plan is. And then at the Air Base Park, this is to put um, the bathrooms in place by the Splash Park, as well as start putting some funding together to do that adaptive park that the Modernization Task Force um, had presented to us several months ago. The next part is um, various departments. So this is totaling about six million. So this lost revenue and um, the American Rescue Plan money allows us to go and use the money for governmental services. So we are using this, or we're proposing to use this to help fund some of those funds and departments that, have, that rely heavily on general fund. So that way we are able to reduce the transfer from general fund, so that money will be back into general fund, and then we'll be able to put some money back towards our emergency fund to help reimburse us for a lot of the COVID expenses that we had during the year that we haven't been reimbursed previously for CARES Act or previously for FEMA. So that's the purpose of these. Next will be um, just some COVID-19 related expenses that this plan will let us do. These expenses have to start from March 1st, 2021. So it's not the previous expenses, it's starting March 1st, 2021. Um, we were sanitizing the buildings, we were continuing to buy supplies, and with this uptick, we're gonna buy additional supplies. So we'll be able to use this. Um, the security guards we've had to put in place here as well as the cart house to um, screen those visitors coming in and out. So that's gonna cover that. Juvenile detention facility, um, he has found some equipment that will help to screen those juveniles before they enter into the facility. So if they are affected, infected with the disease, they won't be able to enter and then it won't spread through there. And then because of all of the supplies that we have been buying and still need to buy, the warehouse is kind of running out of space. So we're gonna go ahead and put up a building that will help supply um, those COVID-19 supplies, as well as some emergency supplies that we have there. Um, another part um, of this plan, which is the HVAC system. So it allows us to replace or update, upgrade HVAC systems in government buildings to help circulate that airflow and enhance it to hopefully mitigate any type of virus, especially the COVID-19 virus going through. So this is the list that we are projecting or proposing and the estimates for each of them to be upgraded and are replaced. And then next, um, so it does let you use it for uh, water. So this is gonna be our flood control infrastructure. The Bayou La Carte pump station, this is the match for our capital outlay money. The Little Bayou Black pump station at Barrow, this is a new project that we are trying to put some engineering money towards, so that's what that is. The Lower Montague drainage and the Elliott Jones. The Elliott Jones is to be able to do the um, the rakes. It was an alternate bid that we didn't have the funding, so this is allowing us to do that. And I think I have one more. Yeah, so we have in that um, water flood control, we have various flood control projects, so this is just kind of a list of what those are. Um, if it's not used for this list, it would come back to the council um, to do a budget amendment. And I believe that might be it, and I tried to be as quick as possible. Uh, thank you, Ms. Malden. Mr. Amity? Yes, and thank you for preparing that report. I, uh, I thank you. I sent some questions to you, and you answered those. Thank you for that. I come up with some more, and I think you've answered most of those as well. But I do have one question about the Brady Road project. 
I know that it's still sitting in priority five because I checked the, the list yesterday. So there's still an opportunity that that money could go to priority one next year and we, we can get that money. Are we going to be able to refund ourselves? Yes, sir. So what will happen is we will use what we're putting in place. It's very scary seeing yourself on the big screen. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and um, use it towards our match. Or we could um, put it back into the rescue plan fund and decide where else we would like to use that money instead of that. Okay, and one other thing, maybe, and I think I asked you this verbally, but the, the public safety fund, that's HPD and HFD, the fire department? That is Home of Police and Home of Fire. Okay. Um, thank you, ma'am. All right, Mr. Michel. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of questions. Um, uh, and they're not in any order, okay? But uh, but the the committee, y'all talked about the committee for the uh, for the grants, okay? Uh, is that uh, is that going to need to be approved by the council or not? The committee itself needs to be approved, no, or no, what no. we come up with. Yes, um, I don't know that answer. Well, once we get down to it, we will absolutely present it to the council with what we've come up with. Um, as far as it being approved, we'll look into that whenever we come up with it and determine that way. Okay, because for the sake of transparency, I think that if it's not approved by the council, somebody outside of administration should also be on the committee. So that's that's my thought on that. Uh, La Petite Theater, the money was already funded. Could, could we not use that money somewhere else? As well as the Terrebonne General money, Terrebonne General provided you with lost revenues, but did they provide? No, sir. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. The Terrebonne General was not lost revenue. That number came from the expenses that they incurred to do the vaccines. Okay. They didn't get paid to do the vaccines? Not all of it was refunded. No, sir. Oh, okay. Really? All right. Um, and um, and then the, you know, the the Parkwood, I'm all for that. I just don't know that we should do it all in the first year. It'd be nice to see how, how they come along with it. Uh, and you said the Bayou Country Sports Complex is a match. Is there any is there any way we can get more money? Because I think we can do uh, stuff that's going to help tourism. And, and is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so I mean, boy, it'd be really nice if we could do something more with the Bayou Country Sports Park and 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 get that. This is an opportunity for us to get it closer to uh, completion. So and one thing that I didn't mention, and I should have, is our total plan is for 30-something million. So we do have 13 million that has not been allocated. The purpose of that is because every year we can calculate lost revenue and we could use it that way, or there are other projects that come up that we can use the money for that we could do it. So it's not completely out of the question just yet. Okay, and then the, the HVAC, are, are we doing something to help purify the air? Is that part yes, of sir. it? Okay, all right. Yes, okay. Sir. Uh, all right, that's my question. So, uh, it's, it's a lot of money, and I'm just frankly amazed that all of the people who come out and talk about recreation and, and, and are not here to, to chime in on this. I, I just think this is a perfect opportunity for the public to come out, and it's very disappointing that very few have. Um, but... Um, it would have been nice, you know, it's a lot of information. I wish we could have discussed it before it came up for public hearing, but we're told we can't do that. So, um, but that's all I have. Thank you. Very, uh, I appreciate all of your effort. You, as I told you privately earlier, uh, you, you just have such a depth of knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. And I know, Ms. Moden, we, we discussed today about roads and road panels, and I know that's very, very important. And I did speak to uh, Parish President Dove, and he committed that if we can <clears throat> figure out a way to use that $13 million, then uh, we can dedicate at least $5 million of it toward that. So that's something that, you know, maybe you and I can look at and see if there's any way that we can uh, utilize that at least $5 million of that 13 to try to crank out some of these road panels. Mr. Babin. Yes, Candace, you did an excellent job. Thank you, because there was a lot of questions that, that we all had, and, and you explained them tremendously. I, just a couple questions. On the Parkwood, it, I think you said 36 homes by 2022. Well, we're only five months away from there, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think there's nine out there. I see Mr. Ernie sitting in the audience. Mm -hmm. Does this mean at least construction going on, or does it mean that you have to have 36 
people in there to, to qualify so for? I believe, and Ms. Kelly Cunningham may be able to answer this question a lot better than I can. Um, and that's part of the reason why it's both infill and first time right. home buyer. So the infill would be rental properties. So it would be easier to get some, you know, individuals in there. We do have to get them built. But if you want, Ms. Kelly could answer yeah, that sure. a whole lot better yeah, than I definitely. can. Definitely. I mean, because it's a concern because it's so close and I just don't want us to be uh, penalized in any way. Right. And yes, Ms. Kelly, if you don't mind, go ahead and introduce yourself and give your position. Hi, Kelly Cunningham, Director of Housing and Human Services. Um, initially, um, in our agreement with the state, they required at least 74 homes be occupied by people that are considered low income, 80% of median or less. In my conversations with the state, they've determined that if we can get 36 homes built by the end of 22, that they would consider closing out the project. I'm, I'm sure that if we are on the road to that at that time, if we have not met that deadline, they will give us an extension because they have given us extensions in the past. Good. Yeah, because, I mean, this is a very worthy project, all right? I mean, John and I sitting up here right now on the planning commission, when this came up, it seemed like 2010, 2011, whenever it was. And, and I would love to see this project get moving forward. I just don't want us to lose anything on that one because it is a, a very worthy project. I was just concerned that if we could not meet the 36 homes, but again, that's in your negotiation with them that uh, I feel certain you can convince them. All yes, right, thank well, you. thank you on that one. It, well, while she's up here, does anyone else? Yeah. Um, well, Mr. Michel, you have a, a question for Ms. Cullingham? Yeah, I just, it's by the end of 2022, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because it's not just five months, so it gives us a lot no, no. more time. In five months, we'll be in 2022 okay, is gotcha, what gotcha, I meant. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, thank okay. you. Now, Ms. Cunningham, you received like, of course, you actually received like an email or so from uh, the feds uh, stating this, right? Well, actually, it's from the state. Um, the money flows from the feds through the state. And yes, I did get an email saying that if we could have 36 homes completed by the end of 2022, they would consider the project complete and close out. And if they see that we have $3.1 million in this fund, even if it's yeah. beyond that, that's going to go a long way oh, in convincing absolutely. them because the money's there. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Domain, did you have a question for Ms. Cunningham? Yeah, Ms. Cunningham, not necessarily a question, but a statement. Of everything that's in this list, I think um, how low-income housing is the most important thing, and I wish we could have put $10 million um, towards low-income housing because it is such a need. Um, getting the grass cut and low-income housing is um, is one of the top priorities, I think, that we need to focus on. That mental health and homelessness um, are all things that we need to do. So I am I'm ecstatic that this is in here because a lot of the clients that I see on a daily basis will absolutely benefit from this. And so um, if we could have put more and if we have the opportunity to put more, um, I want to put more so that we can offer more of that. So thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Doing. Are you Good. finished, Mr. Bennett? Yeah, that's, no, I'm not finished. I, I'm, I have a couple Thanks, more Ms. questions. Thanks, Ms. Cunningham. Okay, thank you so yeah. much. Uh, j just a couple of things. We're moving. We. We're funding things that we did budget amendments on already. So that money, as you said, and I, I don't know the total, is, is going to go back into general fund. I think everybody heard the central theme of everybody up here tonight is roads, 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 and more roads. I'm just asking that this money going back, if it can go towards roads, that's where I, I, we have a lot of priorities in this parish, and I'm not saying we don't. One of them is just getting around the parish on a daily basis. So. Hopefully that can go back to some of that. Right. So I do know through the discussions with Mr. Dove, um, Rose has come up same as it has come up with you guys. Um, right. Unfortunately, the way that the funding came out, it's not available. No. One thing that we have heard is the state is allotting some of their money which is their revenue loss money as well to the parish transportation fund. So there's a possibility that we're going to get some additional prod, you know, road prod money from them. Um, and of course, you have the infrastructure program that the current Biden administration is trying to put together that may be um, something as well. But it is something that we have discussed um, and we will continue to discuss. Good. Yeah, thank you very much. And then the other thing I, I mentioned to Candace that, that uh, this afternoon, uh, 
Darren as the chairman, me as the vice chairman, and John Amade as the budget and finance met with Dan from Bourgeois and Bennett to go over the budget. And he just indicated, and Candace is going to get with him, that he read this program and, and he, again, thought that right. there may be some <clears throat> other areas that this parish could possibly get some more money out of this, and, and Candace is going to pursue that. Again, that's his opinion. I'm not saying that you and Mr. Dove or anybody didn't do a great job at what you did, right. but if there's more out there, we, you know. Yes, sir. So I, when I put everything together and before we even sent the memo out to the council, I had sent it to Bourgeois Bennett and had them look at it. Um, and Dan did go back and forth. Him and I have had discussions. Um, we're in the process of seeing eye to eye on it. Um, and there is some possibility to increase our calculation for our reduction in revenue. Um, so hopefully. And if that does come into play, absolutely, it'll have to be presented back to the council um, to use that money how we see fit, if that's what we determine. We'll, we'll be happy as a lark if there's more millions coming somewhere. Yes, sir. So thank you very much for a great job. You answered all the questions I had. Thank you. We have a motion um, by Mr. Dirk Guidry, seconded by Mr. Trosclair. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item D, an ordinance to authorize the acquisition of properties, sites, and our servitudes required for the 11B Forest Drainage Project, Parish Project Number 01-DRA-40, authorize the parish president to execute any and all documents necessary to acquire sites, property, and our servitudes for the said purposes, to authorize the parish legal staff to commence expropriation proceedings in the event the sites, property, and our servitudes cannot be obtained conventionally, to declare that the taking, if required, is necessary and useful for the benefit of the public and to provide for other related matters thereto. Public once. Public twice. Third time public. Motion closed. Motion closed by Mr. Amity. Seconded by Mr. Harding. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion adopted. Motion adopted by Mr. Amity. Seconded by Mr. Harding. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Ordinance is adopted. Item E. An ordinance to amend section 22-227 of the Terrebonne Parish Code of Ordinances to extend the no wag zone in Bayou Ter in Terrebonne in accordance with the Terrebonne Parish Code section 1-9 amendments to the code effective of new ordinances amendatory language and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, July 28th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Okay, well, we're in public hearing. Public once, public twice, third time public. Motion to close. Motion to close, Mr. Babin, seconded by Mr. Amity. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion to adopt, Mr. Dirk Guidry. Second. Second, Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ordinance is adopted. Item F, an ordinance to authorize the acquisition of property sites and or servitudes required for the Chacahula Gibson Drainage Project, parish number Parish Project Number 16-DRA-26, authorize the parish president to execute any and all documents necessary to acquire sites, property, and or servitudes for the said purposes, to authorize the parish legal staff to commence expropriation proceedings in the event the sites, property, and or servitudes cannot be obtained conventionally, to declare that the taking, if required, is necessary and useful for the benefit of the public and to provide for other related matters. Public once. Public twice. Third time public. Motion to close. Motion to close, Mr. Babin. Second, Mr. Amity. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion to adopt, Mr. Harding. Second. Second, Mr. Amity. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ordinance is adopted. Item G, an ordinance to authorize the acquisition of property, sites, and or servitudes required for the D13 retention pond project. Authorize the parish president to execute any and all documents necessary to acquire sites, property, and or servitudes for the said purposes. To authorize the parish legal staff to commence expropriation proceedings in the events the sites, property, and or servitudes cannot be obtained conventionally. To declare that the taking if necessary, if, re if required, is necessary and useful for the benefit of the public and to provide for other related matters thereto. Public once. Public twice. Third time public. Motion to close, Mr. Dirk Guidry. Second to Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion to adopt, Mr. Dirk Guidry. Second to Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ordinance is adopted. Motion to go back into regular order. Motion to go back into regular order, Mr. Dirk Guidry. Seconded by Mr. Danny Babin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item seven, announcements. Council members. Well, first of all, Mr. Parish President, do you have any announcements? Okay. Um, where are we? Ms. Ms. 
Ms. Domingue. Yeah, I would like to announce that Governor John Bell Edwards um, announced today that today is um, National Opioid Crisis Awareness Day. Um, and we are having an opioid crisis here in Terrebonne Parish. Um, we've had a lot of overdoses, and I think it's directly related to the pandemic. So if you know somebody in your family that needs help, um, please have them reach out to a mental health provider. Thank you. Mr. Michel. Uh, thank you. And not to not to harp on the pandemic and the vaccination, but I, but again, I ask everyone uh, who has not been vaccinated to please do so. The hospitals are are, are filling up. It's uh, there's going to come a point at, at the rate things are going where people are going to not be able to get into the hospital for other things besides COVID. Uh, so please help to protect your neighbors and to protect the community by getting your vaccination. Today I heard that approximately 96 percent of all physicians have in this country have received their vaccination. So. I, and that's an anecdotal statement. I did not read it for myself. I don't know where it came from, but uh, but it certainly sounds like uh, uh, it, it came from a medical professional. And you know, ask your doctor. They'll tell you if it, they'll tell you if they took it. I'm quite certain. So please consider taking it. There's there's only one way we can go with this. Is is um, is worse if we don't get this under control through vaccination. It's a gift that we've been given. We need to take advantage of that gift. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Michel. Mr. Harding. Uh, yes, again, uh, I, hopefully everyone actually knows that uh, on August uh, 7th uh, at the Dumas Auditorium um, from 8 to 12, there's a number of organizations that have come together uh, to give out vaccines. Um, and then uh, later on, there's uh, another location uh, that's vaccines going to be given out on the same day uh, at uh, the Percy Gabriel uh, gym um, from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, check the commercials. We have some promotions going out there to get everybody to actually get the vaccination to follow up with what on Joe was saying. But then again, you know, I mean, we're trying to provide a service for, for, uh, for the people of Turbon Parish. Um, and that's all we can do. It's your, their, their choice. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Mr. Babin? Yeah, with Clay coming tonight and, and David Rome here, I just want to remind everybody out there, and I don't want to jinx it. We, we hadn't had a storm threat yet. We'll keep our fingers crossed. But now that the rains seem to be over, I don't want people going to get heat strokes, but this is a good time to clean up around your yard. Call the parish if there's overhanging trees in lines. Let us go pick up what you clean up so when a storm comes, we don't have stuff going everywhere. So uh, please, this is a good time to get out and do it. Thank you. Monthly Engineers reports GIS Engineering. Mr. Marlborough, did you have anything? As per by Mr. Uh, Dirk Guidry, second to Mr. John Amity. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Most in adjourn, Mr. John Amity. Second. Second to Ms. Jessica Domain. All in favor say aye. aye. We are adjourned.